Well, are you? Enjoyed the presence of the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hey, God is good. God is good. I'll tell you what, I'm just, just excited about what God is doing. Um, I got a, we got a card from uh, Sister Donna Hudson. Uh, thanking the church for praying for all. I'll try to read it here. And then uh, we'll, we'll put it on the back. Sister Hudson doesn't get to come much. She's got more medical problems than, as my daddy used to say, Carter has liver pills. <laughs> you know? But she still loves God. You know? Like she, she just, she really just, uh, she really loves God and, and she never complains. I don't care what she's going through. She's been through more surgeries in the last year than I've been through my whole entire life. And I've had a few. But she still just loves God. And she's up in years and she's no longer able to come. But she sent us this card and said, Dear Pastor Graham and Church, you and the people of the church are very special. And you'll always be a part of the warmest thoughts and feelings in my heart. And kept so close to my mind. I am so thankful for all of your prayers. Uh, I've been through so much, but God has brought me through so many surgeries. But God continues to bless me. Thanks again uh, for you all for <clears throat> praying for me. I love you all. God bless you. You are wonderful. That lady's from the South. There's too many you alls in there, not too many. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna we're gonna put this on the back. I tell you what, I, I, God, you know, God laid something on my heart this week, and I've been looking at it and studying it, talking about love, and uh, talking about God's love. And y'all, oh, I'm sorry, y'all can go down. See how I'm saying. <laughs> You folks from no <laughs> And uh, I just I've been thinking about it, and then I begin to think about God's love and and uh, then I, I looked it up and then I began to study a little bit about the agape love. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna have some fun before I start. I can't help it. I gotta do this. <laughs> if I ever find true love. <laughs> If I ever do, and I ever stand up here to say I do again, I heard the perfect love song Friday night. Now this love song is from the men to the wife. So I want you husbands to take your wife's hand and I wife, I want you to look into his eyes. And I'm going to read to you the perfect love song. And I may even sing this to her if I ever find that true love. It goes like this. You say that I don't love you. You say my love's untrue. Well, darling, if I was a rich man, I'd prove my love to you. I'd buy you a diamond ring and a new fur coat or two. Honey, if my nose was running money, I'd blow it all on you. Yeah. If my nose was running money, I'd blow it all on you. I'd buy you a Cadillac and a new Mercedes too. I'd build you that mansion upon the mountaintop. If my nose was running money, but honey, it's not. <laughs> If my nose was running money, I can tell you what I'd do. I'd buy me a John Deere tractor and we'd get rid of the old gray mule. I'd carry you down to the store and buy you a brand new pair of shoes. And you would not have to be plowing barefooted the way you always do. If my nose was running money, we could have everything we please. The first time you wanted cash, all I'd have to do is sneeze. <laughs> While we'd be living high on the hog, and the hog wouldn't be so lean. If my nose was running money, honey, we'd be rolling in the green. It's a booger of a problem that I've got. 
I wish my nose was running money, but it's not. <laughs> I'd buy you a Cadillac and a new Mercedes too. If my nose was running money, I'd blow it all on you. <laughs> now, if that ain't true love, what is it?
Love is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. Love, true love for your companion is not putting her out there on a pedestal so you can show everybody what you got. It's not about bragging rights about what you got. True love is whether she's pretty or not, if God give her to you, she's your wife and you love her. Amen. And you love Him. God doesn't care what you look like. God doesn't Listen, if God only saved three people, I'd be in trouble. <laughs> I'd be a lost ball in high weeds, as the old saying goes. <laughs> Love does not act unbecomingly. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. Love and true love uh, is not out there uh, to, to seek its own, to make its own self look good. Uh, true love uh, is for some that you are giving to someone else. God's love is, and Paul's trying to explain this to the church. You know, listen, uh, you know, don't be so hooked on yourself uh, and so be so in love with yourself uh, that you cannot love others. Uh, I know people that are so in love with themselves uh, that nobody's good enough for them uh, and nobody ever will be uh, and they'll never, they'll never get married uh, because there's no person in the world uh, going to live with that person. They're not going to do that because they're so hooked on themselves. They're so in love with self. And they got it. Everything is all about me. Well, I got news for you. When you love somebody, when you love God, it's not all about you. It's about that sinner. It's about that homeless person that's sitting there that is filthy, that stinks, that needs God. When you love God, it's not about all about what you can get from God. It's not about all of what God can do for you, but it's what, as uh, President Kennedy said, it's what you can do uh, for others. Uh, God is saying the same thing. Uh, I give you my love. Uh, I sent my son. Uh, I give you all the love that I had. Uh, now I want you to take that love, uh, and I want you uh, to give it to someone else. Amen. My brother tells me sometimes, he told just recently, he told me, he said, listen, you're a nice guy. And he said, the reason you get in trouble is because you're too nice. <laughs> I said, man, don't stay. No, no, no. He goes, really listen to what I'm saying. He said, you're almost too nice to a fault. Now, I'm not boasting. This is what my brother says about me. I don't see myself this way. But he says, you give to people and you do this and you do that. And he said, you get burnt. He said, stop being so nice to everybody. <laughs> I said, that's just who I am. He said, well, you need to be more like me. <laughs> if I don't like you, I ain't doing nothing for you. I can't be that way, man. <laughs> Why? It's because of the love that God has put inside me. I, ha I love people. Uh, I, and you know what? I try to share and give the love that God has placed in my heart to others. Uh, and that's what Paul was saying. Listen, uh, y'all stuck on yourself. Quit loving yourself so much uh, and love others. Uh, said love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, uh, but rejoices in truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. True love will put up with stuff in your life that you yourself would never tolerate. The natural man in you would not do it. But because of the love of God that He puts in our hearts for others, we do things that we would not normally do. 
Jesus uses the same word in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. Jesus says it like this. You have heard it said, he shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. He said, but I say to you, love your enemies. Right. Mm. Mm. That's tough. Mm -hmm. right. There's a few people in my life I don't want to love. <laughs> I'm just got to be honest. There's just people I don't want to love. I don't even want to like you. But I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. I've got to love them anyway. Do you know how hard that is sometimes? <laughs> you, just, you just got to do it. He says you are to love your enemies. Love those that do you wrong. Love those that lie on you. Love those. You see, here, here, here's the whole thing. The reason why he's telling us this is because everything that anybody has ever done to us was done to Christ. Everything that has ever been said about us has been said about Christ. Every action that was taken against us has been taken against Him. But yet, He loved us and He said enough that He forgave us, forgave the world and in that multitude that said crucify any one of them that would have fallen down on their knees that day of His crucifixion. He would have said the same to them that He said to the thief on the cross today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Why? Because Jesus is love. His life is love. Everything about him is love. And if the whole multitude would have fell on their knees and cried out unto him like the thief did, he would have forgiven every one of them that day. Yes, he would. Amen. But only one. But only one. You don't have any other choice if you want God's love. You, the only choice you have is to call on Him and let Him pour His love into your heart. But He's a gentleman. He loves you, but He will not make you do anything you don't want to do. He loves you. From the time you drew your first breath, the love of God was on you. His love will be on you until uh, to the day that you draw your last breath. But what you do with His love, how you respond to His love, determines uh, whether you're going to inherit uh, the heavens uh, that out of His love for you, uh, created for you. If we don't accept His love, then all that you do is in vain. He said, but I say unto you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Now this is not the, the version that I would normally use, but I'm just using it. So that ye may be the sons of your fathers who is in heaven, for he causes his son to rise upon the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who you love, now see, it, it's easy to love people that love you. It is. If somebody loves you, you can love them right back. It's easy. But when they don't like you, and they let you know in no uncertain terms they don't like you, it's hard to love that person. That's right. You'll ignore that person. <laughs> you ask me how I know? <laughs> I'm not singing that song. <laughs> But you, 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 you would just, you'll do everything you can to ignore that person. But yet, every day, 
when we don't know God, every day that we don't serve God, what we are doing is we are telling God we don't like you. We are telling God we don't need you. I have all the friends I need, but I don't need you, God. What we don't, what we don't realize is He is the only friend that we really need. I said He is the only friend that we really, if we're going to have a love relationship with somebody, it should be with God. If we're going to be in love with somebody, it ought to be with God. Because when we're in love with God, God is going to in turn put people that we love in love with us. Amen. And I said, He's going to lead us to people that love us. He's going to help us love others if we have that love relationship with God. People want to have a relationship with God, but they want it on their terms. They only want it when they want something. They only want it when they need something. Well, I got news for you. If you only want God when you need Him, then you will serve Him 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. You will not let an hour of your day go by that you do not love God if you really need God. Because I need Him every hour in my life of every day. Amen. Amen. I need His love. There's some times uh, when God will just show His love to me uh, when I need it the worst. There's times when over the last 20 years when I would be sitting in my chair alone at home uh, and I would feel like, uh, as one man said, it felt like I always just come home to the porch light. <laughs> I didn't have a dog until I got Gracie. All these years I'd come home and there's times I would be sitting in my chair for the last 20 years and I would be so alone. And I, I really wouldn't have anybody to call. Because everybody that I called, I called and they're, you know, they're probably thinking when their phone rings, I hope it's not him again. <laughs> Please let him call someone else. And I've been sitting there, and I, I, I would, and I would feel, and all of a sudden, to, the presence of God would come down on me, uh, and I would begin to feel loved. Uh, I would begin to feel at peace, uh, and I would begin to feel like that room was full of people, uh, and there would be nobody there but me and God. Amen. Why? That is His unconditional love. Uh, only God can do that. Uh, only God can can manifest itself to us like that. Mm -hmm. He said, if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing to others? Don't even the Gentiles do the same? What does he say? Mm -hmm. We got to love everybody. And I always tell everybody, and I, I, I talked to, a, to a, a lady the other day about coming to church. I said, why don't you come over here? And uh, I was living at, we grew up together as kids, and and we lived next door to her as little kids, and we all grew up together. And she called, she finally called, and she goes, well, I, I, I just had to call to find out how you're doing. Anyway, we was talking, and kind of find out her husband had passed away in September, and, and they'd been going to church, driving all the way down to Eagle Way. Wow. I said, what? I didn't know her husband had died until she told me a little bit later in the conversation. I said, well, we're a whole lot closer than Eagle Way. <laughs> I said, you live in, you live in Maryville. Mm -hmm. We're a whole lot closer than Eloy. Yeah. Why don't you come <laughs> over? And I said, just come visit with us. I said, because there's one thing that you will find out. And she said, what's that? I said, every, I said, unless you run out the back door like a, you know, speak of lightning. I said, you will not get out the door without everybody in the church shaking your hand. Amen. I said from the littlest to everybody else. <laughs> I'm learning. I said people will show you a love Amen. that you have not felt and experienced in a church in a long time. 
And then she said, well, my husband died, and I haven't been to church since September. I said, shame on you. If you was going to church because he was going to Eloy, you can go to church for Maryville to surprise by yourself. I said, I drive from Phoenix to surprise by myself every sermon. I use every tactic I can to get over here. I try to take away all their excuses. But I try to emphasize to her that if you come, you will experience love. And the love that you experience from these people, the reason you experience it is because of, of their love for God and the love that God has put in their heart and because they share that love. He said, therefore, ye are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is. What is he saying perfect? He's saying you are to love one another. Now, again, there's people that it's hard to love. There's people that I love from a distance. <coughs> You're in that state, I'm in here, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just that way. But you see, God's love is completely undeserved. None of us has, can say that we deserve the love that God has for us. But we don't have to deserve it. Because in Romans 5 and 8 said, but God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I am so thankful uh, that he didn't look at me uh, and size me up uh, and, and say, well, uh, you do this and you don't do that and well, I, I, can't, I, I just can't love you because you don't fit the mold. Huh? Well, I can't love you because of this or because of that or because of something else. But God loves everybody the same. And he, yet, while we were in sin, you see, it's easy to give gifts to those that you love. <laughs> If you love somebody, it's easy to do something for them. When I was married, I'd stop, it was nothing for me to stop by on my way home and pick up flowers and bring them to my wife. And you know what? I didn't expect anything in return because I knew because of the love that I showed her that I would, she would in turn return that love to me. That's all God's asking us to do. And I, I, you know what? I didn't do it. You see, a lot of people love God for what God can do for them. But you're loving Him for the wrong reason. That's right. Because she was crippled. She couldn't drive. She couldn't go out of the house. She couldn't go pick me up something at the store and bring it home to me. You hear what I'm saying? See, it's not all about what we can get back. Right. It's what we have in our hearts. Amen. And so I did think. And, and, and my, my uh, one time this, this, this preacher come to my dad. And he told my dad, he goes, I, I just don't understand. He said, I just don't like it. He said, I'm having a hard time with something. And my dad said, what are you having a hard time with? I'm having a hard time. He said, I'm just having a hard time understanding your son. Because, you see, my wife was, was diagnosed when she was 23 years old with rheumatoid arthritis. Within 18 months, she couldn't walk, she couldn't do anything, she couldn't feed herself. I mean, and for the next 20 years, it was just one surgery after another, one IC unit after another. I mean, it was just constant. It was, I mean, it was just constant. I had a, had a baby at three months old when she first went to the hospital the first time. I'm staying with my mom because the bridge is washed out. She's in the hospital on that side of the river. <laughs> I stand with mom, and I had and I had this I had this three month old baby, and I'm laying in bed, and she starts crying. I get up to get her bottle. That's what she always did at home when mom was there. Mom was in the hospital. She ain't there. My mom's across the room. She's crying. I go and I get her a bottle. She don't want the bottle. She's crying. 
So it must be something else. It was something else. She needed a doctor change. And it wasn't wet. <laughs> and it was cloth. We didn't use we didn't use throwaway diapers. My love. I, I mean, my mom comes running in the bedroom. She goes, I'll take care of that. You've got to get up and go to work in two hours. I said, No, mom, she's mine. I'll do this. I can gag my way through it. <laughs> I am not kidding you. I thought I was going to die before I got to that diaper. <laughs> But why? But so this preacher says, in all of this, and it's been 15 years, and I don't understand it, said, he's still with her. Said, he didn't. Said, don't, I mean, now you got to understand, <coughs> most, most men at that age, they were just packed up and left. Yeah. I'm not boasting, I'm just saying. I loved her. Unconditionally. My dad looked at him and he said, listen, that's my son you're talking about. And he said when he stood and made those vows, at 19 years old, he did not know four years later his life would be turned upside down. But when he told her that he loved her, and when he made those vows, he meant them. And he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you right now, I don't appreciate what you said. Mm -hmm. You know what that was? That was a father's love coming through for his son to someone else. Right. That's exactly what the father will do to you uh, right. and for you uh, when somebody challenges you, uh, when Satan challenges you uh, as to you, uh, as to how good or how bad you are, uh, the father's love uh, will come to your rescue uh, and bring you and deliver you. Uh, don't let the devil uh, keep you uh, from entering into the fullness uh, of the love uh, that God has for you. Uh, he has an unconditional love. Uh, with his love uh, comes correction. Uh, if we're not doing right, he's going to convict us. Uh, he's going to tell us. Uh, when I would do something that my dad didn't think was right, my dad would tell me. Told me one day, he said, boy, he said, I'm a whole lot older than you. But I will tell you this. If you do this, I will do this. And if I can't do it with this, I'll do it with a baseball bat. Do you understand? What was he doing? He was, he was telling me with a definite father's love that, hey, I want you to do the right thing. I want you to be the right person. I want you to show the love that you have that God has given you. So therefore, God loved you while you were a sinner. In Romans 8 and 5, it said, Who will separate us? Romans 8 and 35. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? You know what? You cannot separate yourself from the love of Christ. That's right. I don't care how deep in sin you go, the love of God is going to follow you. Oh, he does Now he won't. Oh, yes, he will. Oh, no, he won't. Oh, yes, he will. Mm -hmm. You backslide and you will try to hang around with the Christians and you see how uncomfortable you are. Right. Don't tell me his love is left. You go out into your friends and try to do the same things you used to do after being a Christian and, and, and all of a sudden you're feeling like I shouldn't be here, but yet, yet don't tell me God leaves you. That's right. I said his love will never leave. Just because you get saved don't mean you're going to stay saved. It don't mean that you're always going to be saved. If you backslide, you're going to have to come back to the altars of right. repentance again. But the reason why you will come back is because His love will draw you. Why? Because it's unconditional. Say, well, I've tried this six times and it hasn't worked. Try number seven. 
Only this time, you quit trying and let God do it. Amen. You quit trying to love of God for what He can do for you and love Him because He's God and love Him because He loves you and see if there's not a difference takes place right. in your life. Amen. Why, why are you preaching this? I don't know. Maybe I need it. But I'm telling you, we, 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 we sometimes forget the love that God has for us. We, we don't really live. But we, we just, we just kind of push the love of God to the, to the side sometimes. God's love is a great love and willing to save sinners. You see, sometimes, I, I've seen this in church, because I've been in church all a lot. I haven't always been a Christian, but I would go because I went because that's what I was raised up to do. I'd go to church. I was no more saved than anyone else. And I know my mom was over there praying that I'd go to the altars, and I didn't do it many times. I, I didn't. But yet I was there. But I've seen something. And I've seen people. And I've seen Christians. And I would listen. The preacher's kids, you listen. At night you go to bed, you hear mom and dad talking in the bedroom. They got the door closed and they're whispering. They think you can't hear. <laughs> if you're 12 years old, you can hear a lot. <laughs> when you slap your brother and say, shut up and go to sleep. <laughs> so you can hear what mom and dad is saying. <laughs> And you hear mom and dad talking about how the people has come to them. And they've talked to them about who God can save and who they feel God can't save. It's not your decision to determine who you think is savable and who you don't. Right. It's not our decision to determine whether a family member can be saved and is deserving of God's love or not. It doesn't matter. It's not our choice to make. That's right. God loves everybody. And so therefore, that's what he says. I, I, I'll save anybody and everybody if they'll just come to me. In Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 4, it says, But being rich in mercy because his great love, which he loved us. See, it wasn't that we loved God, it's that he loved us. Mm -hmm. Because if we can change the way we live, we can just change. If we can break addictions, we can just break them. When we got tired of doing something, Brother Kale, we just quit doing it. You know, we get tired of using foul language, we just stop. But we can't. We cannot do that within ourselves. It takes the love of God to help us to stop to do those things. That even when we were dead in transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. When we were dead in our sins, He spoke life into us. New life. Life abundantly. Life eternal and everlasting. And raised us up with Him and seated us with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that the ages to come He might show the surpassing riches of His grace and His kindness towards us in Christ. Listen, He loved us. He saved us. He sent His Son to prepare a place for us. He's coming back to give. What greater love can that be than to have a God? Love finds its complete fulfillment in Christ. Amen. True love finds a fulfillment in Christ. God loves us. Jesus has demonstrated that love. Therefore, we come to know what love really is when we look at Jesus Christ. People say, what is true love? True love is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if we love Christ, we will have a godly love. We will be able to love. And we have and loving unconditionally is something we have to work at. Mm. Loving unconditionally is something we have to work at. It takes work. But God loves unconditionally. Yes. He, he, there is, I have built a rapport and a love with, with the men that 
prison, even though I'm not there anymore, there's still probably two or three hundred of them that still <coughs> there, still know me. And there's something that took place between me and them while I was there that, as I said a while ago, they're driving the war crazy. When are we going to get to go? So that means i got to get busy, get to look and figure out what we're going to be doing next, buy some materials, and let them know why. Because they have something in their heart for me. Amen. It is a love. They may not recognize it as, as that, but it's a love for me that they want to come and help me. They said, we got to go help that preacher. Right. Some of them that helped tear it out said, we got to go put it back. And the warden's telling me four times last night, he tells me, you've got to get something going because these guys are driving me crazy. <laughs> he said, I can't walk down the hallway. He said, that here they come. Hey, warden, when are we going to get to go over there? When are we going to get to go? You know what that is? It's because that when I was there, I did not cast a dark shadow on their past. Right. I did not look at their alcohol problems. I did not look at their drug problems. Uh, I seen them as people. Uh, I seen them as souls. Uh, and then he says to me, and when are you going to come back and take over the maintenance? He said, I haven't had a decent maintenance job since you left there. <laughs> <laughs> he said, as a matter of fact, he said, at visitation today, he said, I got called out of visitation. He said, for something that you never would have let happen. <laughs> and I said, what's that? Finish your job and not clean up after yourself. He said they'd been down there working on this ramp and he said they'd been grinding and welding them. and when they left Friday night they just put their tools up and they left all the grindings everywhere and some visitor calls me down and says, I want to talk to that warden. He said, I get down there and she goes, I got a water. And he said, she's shaking her fingers off. Turns her son around she goes, look at the seat of his pants. They were just black. He said, that would have never happened had you been here. You know, what? when are you coming back? Uh-uh. <laughs> I'm done. 17 and a half years, I'm done. But there's something that draws the, that drew those people to me. It's not me. It is the love of God. Amen. And the Lord, he'd go down there and he'd start having these cussing fits and I'd just stand there and look at him and he'd stop. But we have become super close friends. He texts me. He emails me. I email him back. We text back and forth. Went in there last night, you know. And then here's all these, here's all these officers in there that I've worked with. They're all in there drinking, you know, and they're having a party. Well, that's what they do. I mean, they're sinners. But I look up and they're coming. They're, they're literally running over there and grab me and hug my neck. It's not because I was anything special. It's because I look past their sins and I love them. God looks past your sin and He loves you. Some of them come and hug my neck and one of the assistant wardens she grabs me around the neck and she's just hugging my neck. And, and, and she, she desperately needs God. And she's not the emotional type person. But yet there was something that while I worked with her, that I left an impression. And I said, God, you can do it. I'm not there anymore, God. But you can still work in their lives. Why? Because he loves them in their sin. Would our musicians come to come into front of us? <coughs> Sister Murphy, would you folks would come? You see, everybody wants to be loved. I don't care. I don't care who the person is. I don't care how angry or how bitter people are. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants someone to love. And 
I'm going to tell you something. The best person I know for you to fall in love with is Jesus. There's nobody will love you more than Jesus. There's nobody will care for you more than Jesus. And Jesus will always listen. He'll always be there.